guys, it's Jonathan, and every so often I tend to do like a what's on my blah type video, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's an Android device, a tablet, really haven't done one for a computer. That's definitely a uh, good idea. But I tend to do like a what's on my fill in the blank style video. So I figure it's 2017, it's been long enough, it's time to do a refresh of what's on my iPhone 7 Plus, since that's the device that I typically use the most, although that is changing and I might have a video coming at you on what is my new favorite device and what I'm rocking on it. But yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into what is on my iPhone 7 Plus and uh, get this thing started. So starting with the outside of my phone, you can see I am rocking a skin. Now this is actually from Slick Wraps and it's called Slate. But before I was using this, I was actually using the retro um, iPhone 7 Plus skin, which can be found on the Slick Wraps website. I went ahead and got a temper glass screen protector from Spigen this time around for the iPhone 7 Plus and I absolutely love it. It's very smooth, it's very responsive, easy to apply, no bubbles. Um, it doesn't peel up on the corners at all. It works with all of my cases. It may not work with yours, but with mine it does. So for the most part, it is case friendly and the clarity is outstanding. People ask me all the time where I get my wallpapers from and I'm gonna leave a link in the description. It's just a simple website. Go to it on your phone, download the wallpaper you want and then apply it. It's, it's really easy. So I'm sure you guys have heard me say in previous videos of this style that I'm pretty boring when it comes to what I keep on my phone, specifically with the applications, because I don't like to overcomplicate things, especially when it comes to something that I use very frequently throughout the day. On the top, we have my you know regular stock calendar um, settings, and then I have a folder for tools. In here, it's basically all the stock apps that came with the iPhone, including like clock, calculator, contacts, all that good stuff. Nothing fascinating at all in this specific folder. Moving on, we have my camera and then the photos app, but then I have photo and video, which are all third party applications such as ProCam. If you haven't heard of ProCam, it's probably the best uh, camera app in the iOS app store. To edit those photos on the fly, I use Snapseed. It's a free application. Clips is a new application that Apple released. And basically you can record a video and then it's gonna add text, kind of like a karaoke type thing or subtitles. Haven't really messed with it too much, but it seems pretty cool. PixArt is another photo editing application. It's my second favorite. Moving on, we have the Panasonic camera app. Now, as you might've guessed, this controls the GH5, which is my new go-to camera for travel or just you know going out and about and chilling with some family. Filmic Pro is absolutely amazing when it comes to getting super awesome video on your iPhone. It features a log. You have to purchase it separately, of course. I believe it's like, I don't know, 10 bucks on top of the $15 price tag of the application. So backing out of this folder, we have um, the app store, of course, the wallet app, which comes with your phone. I use Google Maps most of the time instead of Apple Maps, just because it's more reliable. Weatherbug is the weather application I use primarily on all platforms, not just my iPhone. And then I have my social folder, which includes uh, the stock Twitter app. I figured just keep it simple. I used to use Tweetbot, but Twitter to me, this the stock app works perfectly fine. Facebook, Hangouts, Instagram, Messenger, uh, the Pages Manager for my Facebook business page. Um, if you guys aren't following me on there, you can find that link in the description. The Duo app, which I don't know. It's, it's Google's FaceTime pretty much. And it works really, really well, actually. Um, there's Pinterest. And then backing out of that, we have my music application of choice, which right now is Pandora. But I do use Spotify as well. But Pandora is really dope, actually. Um, if you get the uh, more expensive version, I, I think it's like 10 bucks a month. Of course, a phone would not be complete without the Starbucks app, so you know I gotta have that. Jumping into my Google Apps folder, I have things like the YouTube app, the YouTube Studio app, uh, Google Photos, Drive, Docs, Play Music. Google Keep is dope. Um, I do find the Stock Notes app to be a little bit quicker, but I like the you know synchronizing with Google Keep. I have the Sheets app, even though I never use it, and then of course Chrome. So backing out of that and going back to the homepage, we have LastPass, which is my password manager. Um, I do pay a yearly subscription to it. I think it's like 12 bucks, like a dollar a month. Feedly is my uh, news app of choice, I guess. Uh, the Google app is awesome because of Google Now. And then I have my Smart Home application folder, which includes things like the Remobile app, um, it has the Nanoleaf app, Philips Hue, 
uh, the stock home app, which basically will connect all this stuff into that folder if it's compatible, of course. And then I have Plex and they are actually sponsoring this video. So let's go ahead and jump into that quick sponsorship and roll the ad. Plex allows you to take your music, videos, and pictures with you no matter where you're at in the world. Simply download the Plex media server to your computer, NAS device, or neck your Wi-Fi router. It instantly organizes your media in an easy to read, beautiful format. With Plex Cloud, you can sync your media located on your Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive account. A basic account is free. However, a Plex Pass account will get you access to the DVR feature, offline media enjoyment, Plex Mix, and much, much more. For more information, including pricing and where to sign up, check out the link in the description of this video. So backing out and going back to the home screen, we have the BH Photo app, Amazon, no explanation needed, eBay again, PayPal, the T-Mobile Tuesdays app, which is really cool because every Tuesday T-Mobile offers something free. The ADP mobile app, which I'm not going to load because that is how my full-time job pays me. So all of my pay stubs and stuff are within this app. The bottom row is pretty plain Jane. We have the phone app, messages app, and then the Newton app, which is my email app of choice. One login for all of my email accounts. Super awesome, been using it for a while. To the next page, we have the Outlook folder looking thing up here, which I'm not going to load because it has a lot of confidential information in terms of HIPAA violations and stuff like that. Because again, it is for my full-time job. That is my work email and how I stay in contact with my boss and my boss's bosses and so on and so forth. Basically, it's just a bookmark. Then I have my banks that I use, Synovus, so Chase, 1-800-PETMEDS, which is where I get my dog's medication. Then we have the activity uh, application, which comes stock on your iPhone, the T-Mobile app. Then I have the thumbnail creator. So if I ever want to create a thumbnail on the go with my phone, I can do so. But let me just tell you, it kind of sucks. I told you in the beginning with the Pandora application that I also use Spotify and you can see it right there. Progressive in case I don't have my insurance card, I don't get a ticket. Uh, the Conductor app is an app to control an LED light that I have. I did a review on it. You can find a card right up here. And then next to that, I have the Slider 1 app, which controls the Edelkrone slider that I have. And I will or possibly might do a video on it. Maybe not a full in-depth review, but just a quick overview because I personally think that this might be the best slider for travel. Airbnb for when I travel. Fandango is where I find the movies that I want to go see. The Asus router application, which is how I can control the AC5300 router that I have. I have a couple games on here like Injustice 2, which was just released. The graphics on this game are incredible for playing it like on a mobile device. I have Mega Man X just because I kick it old school. And of course, the newly released Google Assistant app. Well, guys, that is it. That was what is on my iPhone 7 Plus in 2017 before the iPhone 8 or 7S comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Links to the skin, the screen protector, and a few of the applications that I mentioned can be found in the description of this video. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or hit me up on social as you'll get a response much, much faster and I'm more consistent on social media. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you in the next one. Be easy.